Okay, so what, as I said before, we are gonna be doing this uh, review today for your exam, uh, the full safety certification. And, uh, and because you are gonna be a restaurant manager, there are certain points I'm gonna be touching with you because a manager is responsible for everything that happens in a restaurant. So as a restaurant manager, you need to know about, you need to know about uh, food safety, about uh, temperatures, about everything that, happen, that happens in the restaurant. It's, it's that's, that's simple. So because sometimes some people that take this exam with me or this class, they think they will just be cooking or they just be managing. But, but remember, especially right now, we are going through a pandemic still. We are more than a year, almost a year and a half. Now it is more important than ever for a manager to concentrate, to focus on food safety. And even some of those videos that I have out there, I've been saying that right now, even when you get your certification, your food safety certification, it's a good idea. Even You can even put on social media and let customers know what steps you are taking in the establishment that you can get those customers to come back and to gain that type of consumer, uh, con consumer confidence. Okay. So we are gonna be talking about different things. Uh, obviously, I like, to, I like to teach from a practical perspective. So, so the review process is gonna go, I'm gonna be touching different areas that you may have read the book, you may have looked at video online of any, learning material, but uh, I know exactly what you need, not only to pass your exam, but also to manage your place, because that's the most important thing. You want to manage your place in a sanitary way that customers will notice. When I go out to a restaurant, I can tell you if I'm gonna eat there or if I'm gonna get an excuse that I'm waiting for my friends, I'm going to a parking lot and never come back. So, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to go through that. I want you to be the manager. The customers will show up and they would like to come back because they like your food, but they also know that it is clean. You know, the bathroom, uh, and, and things like that. The bathroom should be as clean as your kitchen. The bathroom should be as clean as your table after cleaning a table after a customer. But before we begin, do you have any questions about food safety, restaurant management, anything like that? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> well, I, uh, it have to be in, in English or can I speak in Spanish? In English, yes, in English, yes. Okay, I, I don't really know too much about this because I'm just starting. So, so you're starting at, at, and, you're, and what are you going to be doing? You're going to be doing, a, you're going to be a manager, right? Yes. Okay. And what would you like to know about management that will help you as a restaurant manager? Go ahead. Throw any questions you may have. I think uh, first of all the the hygiene, uh, how uh, all the temperatures. I I know that that of the food. I know that that things are really important. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, yes. You mentioned the two key components: personal hygiene. Believe it or not, personal hygiene is the most important step you should take to keep your food safe. Because I'm gonna give you an example. The first thing employees should do when they show up to work is if you have a place to clock in, they will be clocking in. 
And after that, is they go, they need to clean their hands, hand washing, be, because they will be they will be touching like a doorknob or pushing a door to get in or anything in an office or a refrigerator, freezer. And that is, is very so important. Yeah, that, that is so important for, for them to get. And so personal hygiene, another thing is that let's say you have you have an accident in the bathroom, meaning a customer, a customer went to the bathroom and the customer had diarrhea, something like that. Not funny to talk about, but that's a reality. So you, you want to make sure that, in, uh, that you have a, a cleaning system in place where one employee is gonna be using protective equipment like a gown or anything like that and different gloves those gloves that are like industrial gloves not necessarily the ones that you use for food handling and and then using the bleach and all the, the protocol because if you don't do that 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 can infect your food establishment so okay. uh, in in terms of uh, internal cooking temperature yes you need to have uh you need to know those just like the same way you know how to get home so let's say you are cooking poultry including chicken duck or turkey or anything that you that you use like you use seafood or pasta for stuffing a, 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 a meal it has to be cooked at 165 degrees for 15 seconds. And 15 seconds, what that means is 15 seconds that, that you take to insert your thermometer into the thicker part of the meat to make sure it is ready. And you always take a second reading. Let's say you are gonna be cooking ground or beef. It has to be, 155 degrees. But let's say you're gonna, you are in a hotel and you're before the pandemic and eventually the pandemic is gonna go away and we're gonna go back to have like a buffet and stuff like that. So you're cooking eggs that will be served later on. Those eggs, shell eggs, they have to be cooked 155 degrees. Okay. Thing is, same with eggs. If you're going to be cooking eggs that will be served right away, then they will be cooked at 145. I'm telling you this because those are things that will be on the exam and you're going to get confused. If you mark one, you think it's on the two of them, 155, 145, you're going to get one wrong. And if you are cooking, think about fish or pork shots or veal. Uh, those are 145 degrees. So now you're gonna be using, let's say you use a, a pasta or legume, a, a rice, vegetables that were not included before, 135. Let's say you're gonna be cutting a melon and you're ready to eat food. That would be 41 degrees. So. Again, anything that is cold must be 41 or lower. Anything that is hot must be 135 or more. And so like personal hygiene, temperature control for safety, those are things that you need to remember. Just like when you are driving home, that you know how to get home because you're gonna have employees Another one thing about as a manager, as a manager, you will be in charge of everything in your restaurant. And one of them is you are going to have employees that are looking for answers. So you, after you become serve safe certified, you you will need to you will be an expert and you will need to answer a question to your employees. And and believe me, I've been a restaurant manager. Before, 
And, and sometimes you will have an employee who's probably going to school. And the employee learned something there about culinary, about restaurant management, about hospitality. The employee will come to a question to you. Um, it could be about full set, but it could be about, well, you're talking about how to reduce food costs. Probably that formula you will need to explain. And why, you, why when you are receiving food, it has to be safe, because if it is not safe, Anything can happen. Okay. Or other, uh, yes. Next question, please. Um, mm -mm. As I say, anything about management, restaurant management, to be specific, or so food safety, anything, anything. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe. Um... how to uh if i have a uh, food that uh i don't know how to say it um maybe uh from a day before how do we have to keep that food uh like in okay. good very good. From the day before, it is it is something that you just need to remember. Twenty four hours. If you make if you make food that will be served between now and twenty four hours, you need to put a date mark on it. You need to put a date because it's it's within twenty four hours. Another thing is if you any any food that you pre prepare on site. You should keep that food for maximum seven days. Seven days. And by the way, talking about numbers, I'm gonna give you six that you are familiar with, uh, six inches of the floor of the ground, but I'm gonna also give you four inches. Four inches will be if you have like a mounted table, like a prep table that is mounted to the floor, four inches of the ground, minimum. Okay. And 90, what is 90? 90 will be 90 days when you buy seafood, you need to keep that, to keep that invoice that will be showing in case your health inspector shows up and wants to know whether you, you got raised, a farmed, raised fish or a wild cat. Uh, so another thing is uh, 14, what is 14? Think about, let's say, a restaurant that has like a buffet. Like think about sweet tomatoes. When sweet tomatoes was open, because uh, many of those places have closed because they cannot serve food open here right now. 14 inches, sneeze guard must be 14 inches from the chest down because you're gonna have customers going there, going through, and you don't want customers to contaminate your food through saliva, that would be a biological contaminant. Or you, you don't want to have, uh, yes, you don't want to have people breathing, sneezing. So that would be 14, another one would be seven. If you have like a, like a shield, a shield would be seven inches. So those are numbers. So now you know four, six. Now another another number that you need to remember is about hand washing. So about 10 to 15 seconds to apply soap in the light, but the entire process takes 20 seconds in the light. So those are key numbers that you need to remember, not only to pass your, your exam, but to manage your place. And you need to know about 30 seconds. What is 30 seconds all about? When, when you are doing ditches, the final, when you do, you do, you wash, rinse, sanitize, and allow for air dry. By the way, never use any of the dry method. It's uh, air dry. But when you are sanitizing, you need to emerge, you need to emerge that uh, 
They quit him for 30, sec 30 seconds. Uh, okay. And uh, if it is quiet, if it, if it is uh, iodine, then you can do seven. So the 180, that'll be for the final, for the final uh, sanitizing. And 180, and, and, and so forth. So those are numbers that you need to remember, just like you will know the telephone number for your restaurant, the website, and the social media page, all the things. Okay, any other questions? Mm. Maybe if some, someone have an allergy or something like that, Oh yes, an allergy. Yes, that that uh, if someone is is, is like uh, having difficulty breathing, or with with hive or wheezing, that means that the person is having an allergic reaction that could be to a certain food. Some people have, are allergic to certain foods. And to avoid that, one thing I want you to remember is this, cross contact. Cross contact occurs when, when you are cooking two type of items on the same oil, let's say you are frying something on the same grill. And when you have a customer who is allergic to like a soybeans or tofu or, or peanut, you need to you need to clean and sanitize that equipment. And my advice to managers and business owners is simple: have a separate. If you have a separate equipment for anyone who may have that allergic reaction, and that will help you with your marketing. That will help you with attracting more customers because they will know if they go to Daisy's restaurant, they will be receiving and consuming safe food that doesn't get a cross contact. Okay. One time I went to a place or a restaurant and I went to buy something that, uh, something simple, I think like beans or rice, something like that. And in the person serving was uh, that took away a, a serving spoon from a different dish, I believe like, uh, meat or something like that. And I say, I'm sorry, but uh, you are just causing a cross contact. And the person was asking me, what is that? And so I explained about, you know, the serve safe process, food safety, uh, just to make that short story, uh, short, I ended up even training some employees of that stuff down the road. So that's important. Okay. So one thing that the one thing you may want to know too is like, how about if you get an employee who has or has had like diarrhea or is vomiting or jandice? So what you should do with that employee is simple. Send that employee, employee home. You need to exclude that employee because, because you don't want other employees and customers to get sick and make sure you get you, you get it like a doctor's note to, to be able to go back to work. Okay. 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 I'm open for more questions. Go ahead. I like to review having a conversation. I don't want just to be talking and you listening. That's not teaching, in my opinion. Teaching is having an interaction. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh can you repeat me, please, again, the temperatures about the food, just to keep in mind? Absolutely. Poultry, 165. Okay. Ground beef, 155. Fish, 145. And at the legumes, rice, pasta, vegetables. 135. Anything that is cold, like a sandwich or the fruit or a salad, 41 or, or, or less below. Because there is what is the, the temperature danger zone. 
which is also known nowadays, the TDZ, temperature danger zone, is between 41 and 100, uh, 135. Why? Because that's when bacteria will grow. And that's why when you are cooling down food, you have to bring it down from 135 to 71 within two hours and from 71 to 41 within four hours. So total process, six hours. Can you do that in five hours? Yes, why? Because if you divide the food in smaller portions, obviously the food is gonna cool down rather quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's what you do. So. Okay, now I even went through the cooling process. Okay, now you know six hours total cooling process. Okay. From 135 to 71 within the first two hours, from 71 to 41 within the next four hours, meaning total of six hours. Okay. And because if, uh, let's say, if you are serving the cold food, and the food is 41, so if it is exceeding like 70 degrees, 54, 60, 70 degrees, you know you have to throw the food away. And uh, yes, and one more thing about hot food and cold food. Hot food can be hot held without temperature control for up to four hours. Cold food can be hot held up to six hours without temperature control. Now, meaning you're gonna have a re what type of restaurant are you gonna have that you're gonna manage? Uh, it's, it's a Mexican food. Mexican food. So, what what, what is on the menu? Uh, tacos, uh, burritos. Um, what else? Uh, like enchiladas. Yes, don't forget that. Ah. And, <laughs> okay, so so again, you want to make sure you keep your food safe, and uh, and the most important thing is one thing you need to remember is this: your customer, your customer is the one that keeps your business alive. Every customer that goes to your place is, is a source of revenue. So, but you will not be there 24 seven. You will have an assistant, you will have employees. So my advice is train your employees in a way that everyone will be on the same page when it comes to full safety and customer satisfaction. Because did you know that if customers see the health inspector going through an inspection, through routine inspection, sometimes the health inspector wakes you up. Let's say you open at 11 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock, the health inspector might show up at 11.30 or 10.40. It did happen to me many times, um, but Luckily, of course, we got that our restaurant was always getting high scores, like 94 and plus. But if every employee knows the importance of food safety, you will be on the, on the winning end of your restaurant game. It's simple. So management is a process of leading by example, managing resources, but including human resources, people. And if you do that, your employees are gonna, I'm going to contribute to the safety of your restaurant or your food more than you might think. It is all about having like open communication back and forth. Okay. okay. Next question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else you can tell me that is important. Okay, what is important is uh, you want to buy food uh, or products that are from approved sources. 
you don't want to be buying your ingredients from someone down the street, uh, someone who has not gone through any food safety training, because if you, when you buy from a reputable su supplier, you will know there is a recall then the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, will be able to track where that food came from. And by the way, the Food and Drug Administ Administration has a program, uh, the Food Traceability Program right now through technology. It can detect, let's say you are gonna have a Mexican restaurant. I've been in Mexico you know, dozens of times and, and I remember I was over there in uh, Veracruz and Misantla and uh, Playa de Carmen, Cosme, all those places. But I can tell you that food that comes, that companies import from, from Mexico, companies here in the US, they have to go to, through a rigorous process. And you, because you're going to be distributing that food to the final, to the end consumer, that would be your customer. It is your responsibility, it doesn't matter how much care the truck driver, your distributor took, but once your food gets into your door, you own it, you see it, you own it, you solve it. Meaning you want to save, you don't want the food to go bad because you don't want to have to throw away thousands and thousands of dollars. And, but you want to make sure the food is safe. So the food safety, everyone should be on the same page. Okay. Uh, what else? Maybe managing employees. Any question about human resources? As I said, I'm the, I'm the instructor and proctor, but I'm also a college professor. So. I've been teaching for the last 12 years. Uh, so I'm a practicing manager. So I'm, work at, uh, I'm a manager, it's a business owner. So you can ask me any questions right now. This is your opportunity. Human resources, what type of employees do I get? What is it, the hiring, anything like that, and believe it or not, it will help you with your full safety because your exam is going to test you on, on knowledge. It is not, you're gonna have like a multiple choice questions. It is not, and you're gonna be getting like scenarios. Like what, what, is, what is like corrective action you will, you will take? I'm gonna give one example. You are the manager of a restaurant. You are passing through through the restaurant, through, through the kitchen area. And you notice that the chef or the cook is cooking chicken that is reading 150. So what do you do? You advise, you coach that uh, cook or chef to bring it up to con uh, continue process to 165 because that is what the standard is all about. That is a corrective Action. Another thing is, you have uh, you notice that you are assigned to one of your employees or the cooks to take the temperature in the kitchen. By the way, my advice is every two hours, not every four hours, every two hours, because that will help you save food that you're not gonna be wasting, okay? So you notice that the temperature of the soup is, uh, is reading, 125 degrees, it's 125 degrees. So you get, you get the, the cook and you advise the cook to, to reheat that to be at minimum 135. Okay, so you were able to bring it back. Maybe the hot holding was not, the heat was not up to the proper level or anything mm -hmm. like that. That is what you call a corrective action and that is preventing before lamenting because it is it is better to prevent than to lament or regret wow i should have done this or we should have done no it's all about preventing you prevent problems and then you satisfy 
all your customers, your external customers that are your paying customers and also your employees. Because employees, they will stay with you. And you know, right now we have a crisis. Employees don't, you know, there are many restaurants and hotels and companies looking for employees, quality employees. And that could be a, a challenge. Any other question? Full safety, restaurant management, anything? Uh, what else is important for a manager uh, to to uh, to have a good? Uh, uh, group of people working with it? First of all, my advice is simple. If you are in the, in the hospitality industry, which includes food service industry, my advice is you want, I want you to hire people that are in the hospitality industry. If you, let's say I'm a big uh, proponent of hiring college students. If you don't want to hire a student that is going to school for nursing, you don't want to hire a student that is going for, for an area that is uh, far away from food, you want to get those employees like that. And the first thing is this, you need to instill your company culture in your employees from day one. That's number one. Number two, you need to see your employees as your customers. They are your internal customers. Number three, communicate. Communication is the key to succeed as a restaurant manager, but also as a leader, keeping your employees happy and the community happy. Transparency is better than secrecy. You communicate with employees and you talk about when you are doing training, they will be jumping on board giving ideas about, okay, so that's why we need to keep, that's why we cannot dump my body into the toilet because by bringing that, it can attach some bacteria and that can cause a problem and bring back contamination. Another thing they will do will be, wow, now we know that we need to dispose my body into the service sink, service sink. Okay, another thing will be they're gonna keep the garbage container outside closed at all time and clean because they will know they don't want to have insects coming into your restaurant. Let's say Shigella. What is Shigella? Shigella is when flies go outside and they step on feces they bring it back to your establishment. So uh, to avoid that, what you, got, you want to have, you want to have air curtains keep swinging. L let's say if you have like a drive through window, something like that. But that's, yeah, to keep those employees, you need to be selective in who you hire. But training, training is the most important thing. And you know what my advice is to all those managers like yourself and brand new business owners. When you open, before you open your restaurant, make sure you provide proper training and sometimes bring help from, from outside, bring someone from outside to do training because you need to focus on managing your, pla managing your place. But if you are only training, you are like a corporate trainer then you will not be able to do operations. Uh, but training is important. If your company doesn't have a training program, you as the manager, encourage your upper level management to do so. Because it goes a long way. And another thing is customer service. If you treat your employees as your internal customers, they will stay with you even when they are offered a little bit more pay because they will become loyal customers to you because they will value 
they will understand that you value them as people, as employees. And another thing to remember about when you are managing people, did you know that employees, that you are a client of your employees because your employees sell you a service for an exchange. So you pay them, but you are to them just like any other customer because they can go away. And I remember I was training someone, a gentleman, a few years ago, might have been 2016, 17. And I remember back then I was telling, telling him about the importance of employee retention and the like. And I told him, you know why? You have those uh, ride share companies where you can order a taxi thrown up. And, uh, and I'm telling him, if you don't keep your employees, if you don't incentivize, incentivize the employee, what do you think will happen? They can go away today and they can get hired within hours using their mobile devices and they will run away from you. And in many states, it is uh, employment at will, meaning that you can fire employees, but they can fire you on the middle of a shift. Okay. okay. Uh, okay, right, so <laughs> if, if you don't have other questions, no problem. If you don't have other, <laughs> other questions, we're going to. Uh, uh, I just wanted to touch certain things with you, and we, we are going to continue the training process. As you know, the training process takes a li little bit longer than this, but uh, I just wanted to, like, to, to get you like, on the right path that you can, get, you can get exactly what you want in terms of your food safety and keeping your restaurant in a sanitary condition providing safe and sanitary food to your customers, but also keeping great employees because great employees are needed in order for you to succeed. Okay, so I, I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to do that kind of Q&A with you.